Lord Captain Wilbur Von Valencia is back and so am I and I'm so excited to get back into this game I stopped playing it for a while and honestly it's one of those games where if you stop it just you have to fuck it I had to rewatch all my old content to get back into it because it's just like it's such an immersive thing that if you're not immersed it goes right over your head so we are back we are playing it we are happy uh we just defeated the prison planet basically uh we just killed the the warden the boss and we saved the winter scale youngin so we are heading back to our void ship on our way to journey on our next voyage permission to report lord captain over the past few days i received several messages from different decks complaining about anomalous behaviors in the ship's computers and servitors the machine spirits are restless and rebellious and no tech linty linity a ritual of pacification can rid them of these obscenities. Now nah, that's obstinacy. Whatever. The tech priest. <laughs> I'm already starting back with the big words. Let's go, dude. The tech priest can deal with the vessel systems, but the servitors, they may make errors in their tasks, disobey orders, change the assigned rituals, and sometimes downright freeze as if in a trance. A click comes over the Vox channel following a, by a wary sigh. Lord Captain, occurrences such as these are caused by errors in the computer calculations or have some sensible explanation. I beseech you not to take those, not to take after those who whisper about the ship being cursed or possessed. Adira joins the channel and chimes in paint playfully. Oh, don't start, old man. All these peculiar happenings have long since turned into local legends. A door slams shut, a lumen starts flickering. I'm guessing those are just the lights. General term for a light source, yeah. Presumably one electrical. Folk have grown used to all that, so our resident ghost has decided to make up the ante. I'm telling you, things are only going to get worse from here. The Technomats inspected the servitors and concluded they pose no danger. According to the servants of the Omnissiah, such behavior is caused either by the echoes of the minds not completely eliminated or by manifestations of the machine spirit's will. Nevertheless, the faulty servitors make the crew's task considerably more difficult and high factum... factotum? Genaris Dongruk... <laughs> <laughs> that's the uh the guy that's in charge of like uh customs i guess you could say he's in charge of getting us stuff and trade and whatnot would like to discuss how he would should deal with the defective property he's awaiting your audience on the bridge okay how do i go back to the bridge void ship management what is this? I haven't seen this. Upgrade the whole 50 scrap. Upgrade RAM 50 scrap. Have I just not? Oh my God, is there a whole like airspace mechanic that I had no idea about? Probably. Is there any, no components available upgrade? Oh look, our ship has its own upgrade thing. Oh yeah, torpedo control. Yeah, this is gonna be a thing. This is gonna be a thing. Why is my shit 90? That's my persuasion. Oh, I can assign people here. So yeah, let me assign you there. Uh, I guess you, you. Oh, she's better off here. Uh, but she's better off there. Warp channeler. I guess I'll take this instead of the shield. Ma I just won't have a shield master. That's that's pretty on par with my gameplay. <laughs> I'm gonna be fucking. I'm gonna be uh, glass cannon. Ah, oh, back to the bridge. Okay, <laughs> Jesus. 
Okay, here we are. Uh, I actually forgot too, and I noticed when I was rewatching my stuff that Adira actually wants to talk with us along with. Fuck, what's her name? What's the battle sister's name? Uh. Argenta, that's right. Yeah, we got Cassia Argenta. Adri Adira, which I need to put that on her. I, l I got his noble sword. It looks so cool. He likes it too, I see. Awesome. That's good. There I am with my dual pistols looking snazzy, bro. I'm sorry. I'm just gushing over this game again. Uh, let's go here. Do I have to go to the throne? No. Uh, who exactly... She said that I was on the bridge, or waiting for Lord me on the Captain. bridge. Lord Captain. Let's discuss things useful to me as a rogue trader. I know I'd like to more know about the, uh, I'd like to know more about my Seneschal. You may call me by my first name if you wish. Never, never would Wilbur say that. Wilbur would never say that, dude. Uh, let's talk about things that are useful to a me. A noble aspiration, Lord Captain. I am ready to acquaint you with all the particulars that interest you. Okay, cool. I like the situation of the Coronas expanse for me. Uh, what do I need to know to keep in mind? This is a topic for an official briefing, not a casual conversation. But I will try to answer succinctly. And if you permit, in my own words. <sighs> the Coronas expanse is considerably removed from the heart of the Imperium. This means that local warp routes become useless within months. Established pathways are regularly subject to attacks from all kinds of rabble. And in the only major port, the Imperium's frigates find themselves moored alongside pirate vessels. Nice. That's cool. Until recently, We're in the, Wild the West. Coronas Expanse could hardly have been called a region of the Imperium. The situation has changed with the arrival of the Lord Inquisitor, but not by much. This place operates under its own rules, you see. More radical, so to speak. But ones that allow for a non-standard approach where there is a promise of victory. The Coronas Expanse is considered rogue trader territory for a reason. Only rogue traders have sufficient military might, audacity, and the rights granted them by the Warrant to survive the leap into the unexplored part of the Expanse, and in the event of a successful outcome, to hold on to whatever they managed to capture on the frontier. Who are the main players I need to be aware of in the Coronas Expanse? In the first instance, you should treat official representatives of the Imperium with respect. The Expanse may be on the fringes, but it still numbers among the territories of the Golden Throne. The arrival of the Lord Inquisitor has turned the Coronas Expanse into a less wild and uncontrolled region, to the regret of some individuals who had grown inured to the local lawlessness. Hmm, interesting. So the Inquisitor kind of runs shit right now. Rogue traders such as yourself are also servants of the Imperium. They Duh. have been accorded special rights and powers. They wield immense authority within their territory. And they enjoy absolute respect in other parts of the Expanse. The most powerful of them are Caligos Winterscale and Incendia Bastal Chorda. Tread carefully when dealing with either of them. Okay, Bastal Chorda. That's a new one. If we are to speak of unclaimed territory, which is what footfall is, among the scum that dwells on that handful of asteroids, there are three factions that wield considerable influence in the sector. The first is the Kasbala Commission, organized crime in its most primitive form. It holds sway over the liege of footfall and has links to rogue trader Winterscale. The second faction is an offshoot of our shining Ecclesiarchy, followers of St. Drusus. They are actively building their forces and hold influence over rogue trader Chorda. And finally, the third faction, the Explorators, a wing of the Adeptus Mechanicus. They are willing to die and kill for the secrets of the ancient technological heresies that are hidden among the stars of the Coronas Expanse. Very cool we get a breakdown of the factions out here. Footfall is the massive void port at the edge of the Coronas Expanse. 
a notorious hotbed for vice trade and rogue trader intrigue we probably already read that before uh these guys cool i'm gonna i'm probably gonna like the explorators honestly though the uh followers of saint derusus or whatever the fuck it was are cool too conrad our previous master of whispers what can you tell me about his betrayal and what do you think he'll do next ah you know lord captain i am no admirer of fine art but when we next find ourselves in a civilized port with time to spare I will promptly find an artist and commission a portrait of the individual to whom you refer, with a hole between the eyes. Conrad Voitveer. That he committed his treachery and escaped with his life was an unforgivable oversight. Don't worry, we'll kill him eventually, probably, maybe. We both served Lord Captain Theodora for many years, and we never saw eye to eye. He was... brash. He was never afraid of assuming responsibility, and he willingly took on difficult tasks. I am loath to admit it, but the Von Valatius Protectorate continues to reap the fruits of his labors to this day. His service always garnered my respect. But everything else about him made me want to wring the neck of that two-faced snake. I wonder why he betrayed us. Like what? If you are taking comfort in the thought that we will hear no more of Conrad, prepare to be disappointed. You thwarted his plans his meticulously plotted and nurtured treachery. <laughs> he is sure to attempt to strike at you, and he will use his contacts and knowledge of the Protectorate to do so. The only question, Lord Captain, is whether you will be able to anticipate his next steps. Probably not. I'm actually stupid. That's all for now. As you wish, Lord Captain. I'd like to know about you. As you wish, Lord Captain. What would you like to know? Tell me about yourself. What were you before you became Theodora's Seneschal? I remember he was in the Navy. I used to be an officer yeah. in the Navis Imperialis. No, I used to be is not quite right. It was not simply a job. It was my calling, the essence of my life. I was proud to serve Lord Captain Theodora, but in my heart and mind, I'm still an officer of the Imperium. I met Lord Captain Theodora on a mission where the Imperial Navy was providing reinforcement to the rogue trader's army on one of the frontier worlds. Our acquaintance was uh, not easy. Working with people outside the Navy hierarchy has never been my strong suit. It was to my great surprise then that after the mission's completion, I received a referral to leave my service in the Navy and join the rogue trader's personal council. Yeah, that's a pretty good deal. Uh, it was a difficult choice for me. But I saw in the offer a chance to serve the interests of humanity even more effectively than in the Navis Imperialis. You do not need me to tell you just how remarkable a person Lord Captain Theodora was. I recognized her at once as a true leader and formidable creative force. One who had built a protectorate amidst the dangers and wildness of the Expanse. Leaving the Imperial Navy is far from easy. Why were you permitted to quit your post? You could say there was no one among the Naval Command who was willing to impede the wishes of the rogue trader. Makes to sense. To do so would be to risk their own position and their relationship with Theodora. <laughs> the Lord Captain possessed certain contacts in the Imperial Navy. Contacts which she used to request help during the conflict on the border world. And which enabled her to make me an offer that resulted in my joining her retinue. The Narvis Imperialis is an ancient institution with its own mandates and musterless. Coercion test. On occasion, in the heat of an official briefing or an informal discussion, I violated those rules, determined to press my point. It is challenging to choose the words to accurately express my opinion on a situation or the actions of others that do not sound overly scathing or confrontational. Many in command were inclined to view my manner of speaking as unbefitting a person of my rank. Eh, I'll get used to it, probably. <laughs> uh, the way you talk about Theodora, I'm beginning to think you were in love with her. Ooh. What? what? Lord Captain. 
Any allegations of improper feelings or unsanctioned relations are utterly baseless and bordering on the insulting. Okay. Utterly baseless. Okay. Okay. Calm down. <laughs> you have a family? I am a widower. Ah. I am a father of four. And if Damn. my information is not outdated, a grandfather of 11. Damn. My family lives on Dargonus. None of my children express any eagerness or aptitude for serving aboard ship. And I would hardly have insisted that they follow in my footsteps. Fair enough. Thank you. I have no more questions. Of course. I'll take my leave until next time, Shinishal. Shinishal. Cool. Excellent. Now, where else are there any... That dude's just swinging his thing. <laughs> uh, is there anyone else I need to talk to? Poisman in arms. He's not even... Dude, am I stupid? Okay, yeah. There's more this way. Can I explore my whole ship? Like if I go out this door? Okay. Can't go out that way, apparently. What about the elevator that was over here? Will that do anything? It will, Lord Captain's Quarters. Okay. Let's see if there's anything here. Uh, don't care about any of that. Is there anyone in here that is like waiting for me? What is that actually? Fine sculpture made of a strange metal seems to absorb any rays of light that fall upon it. Interesting. Um, oh, there's goods here. Face of the Sovereign. The wearer gains an additional one resolve whenever they kill an enemy. And the Von Valencius cloak. While the wearer is at full wounds, they give plus five to all characteristics. Ooh, that's a little spicy. That's quite spicy. Hey, it's got the owl logo of the people that made the game. Oh, the Shrine of Remembrance. 400 pages holy shit they're just gonna play all these what does that mean i don't know i'm done i'm not looking through all that sorry guys the vault where i keep all my stuffs okay just doing a little snooping the fuck is that thing Long dead eyes of this fierce monster forever captured in the fear and pain of its final moments. Okay. Big ass waterfall we know about. More goods in here. Unfinished letters. Okay. And then what is this cracked data slate? Okay. I wonder if there is like a I'm gonna get over encumbered or something doesn't seem like there's actually anything here to do at the moment so we're gonna go back up to the void ship bridge let me see the other side no that was weird I could have sworn that oh no it was okay yeah I'm just stupid on the layout right now but uh, it doesn't seem like we can talk to any of our other companions. Unless they're like down here or something. Oh yeah, there's Argenta. Okay, okay, here they are. Jesus Christ. Uh, let us talk to the Helmsmaster first, I guess. Tall man appears before you to be woven from tendons and muscle. Blue vein snake under his white, almost dove colored skin. And his scalp and chin are covered with cropped white hair. His neck and shoulders are wrapped in wires that hint at the pre presence of neural connectors under his uniform. The officer's face seems to be twisted in a perpetual grimace of annoyance and anger, and he greets you with a respectful nod. Lord Captain, Master Helmsman Raver, at your service. 
I know who he is. You're Voidborn, are you not? Oh, that's why he's so white. That I am, born into the Helmsman clan in the bowels of the Chars Chartist vessel? Of a Chartist vessel? Uh, studied the family trade until I was 15, then my entire clan was butchered in a mutiny on, by lower hold scum. They spared the youngins, of course they did. Kids and with <laughs> implanted connection connectors make great navigation navigational servitors. But I was having none of it. They weren't going to make my, a servitor out of me, so I escaped in, into the crawl lane. Crawlways? Uh, crawlways. And then I spent months picking them off one by one. One after another. He stops abruptly. You got me talking up a storm anyways. Yes, I am void porn. <laughs> Finish your story, bro. Stay silent for a few seconds. Not much to tell. I gutted every one I could get to, and then I fled upwards to the middle decks. That's where the auger operators took me under their wing. They have apprentice helmsmen of their own up there, you see? Nobody asked me any questions, so I stayed. I grew up trained, got smarter, and ended up in a junior helmsman. A dozen years later, Dan Rock spotted me and lured me away. <laughs> the cheeky blighter. Uh... You know anything about the ship named Fiery Reckoning? Why would I want to know that? That winces as if in pain. I've heard the name, that much is for sure. But I can't recall the details. Ha! I wonder if it was part of that operation that the late Mort was put in charge of. If he was, then there's nothing I can tell you, Lord Captain. The whole thing was kept under wraps. Your best chance would be to ask the High Factorum. Factotum. <laughs> Maybe some of his treasury records have mention of the Fiery Reckoning. Okay, maybe that was in one of the letters I got that I saw. Uh, tell me about the Voidborn. Lord Captain, I mean no disrespect, but you'd better... You'd do better to find someone with a knack for a conversation like Toyman. Toy... Toleman? The new Vox Master. I ain't the talking type. I just get the ship where it needs to go. Best let folks stick to what they do best. You know what? Fair enough. I'll take my leave. Alright, well, let's talk to Argenta first. Rogue Trader. You said you had a personal request for me. I indeed have a request, Rogue Trader. Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought it was going to be voice acting. The accursed servants of chaos who assaulted this ship took the lives of many of your loyal crew members, and they orphaned many children, including the progeny of the brave officers who defended their posts until the bitter end. I don't know what cu customary practices there are for cases like this in the Von Valencia territory, but in, my, in the world I'm familiar with, the children of such brave souls could expect to receive some special consideration. Perhaps the road trader could meet with the orphans. What's good with meeting them? Uh, make arrangements for the meeting worthy of a road trader. I will address the orphans with a speech. I will meet them, nor formalities needed. These are the children of the people who gave their lives to the Von Valencia di dynasty. My consideration is the least that they deserve. Deliver this order on my behalf. The orphans are to be properly provided for, but the personal meeting with the rogue trader is too much. Why would I? Do I wish to fill these children's heads with the illusions that the world and its rulers care about them? <laughs> I have no part in this. No, we're going to tell them no formalities needed. I will pass on your instruction. Thank you for taking my request to heart. Oh, and it just sends us there. Cool. Thought it would be held at a later date, but I guess this is fine. Okay. 
Sup, fuckers? Oh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Imagine. The motley group of adolescents do not take their eyes off you, gazing as if you were a creature straight from a fairy tale. Our indefatigable sister <laughs> has been keeping an eye on these pups. It's uh, Abelard glances at the gathered children. It's Harley the uh, social paradigm. A division of the oh, fuck me <laughs> responsible for upbringing, education and training orphans of those officers and nobles who have died in the service of the Imperium. In here, but we have provided the orphans on our ship with adequate care and instruction. Nice. Argenta is standing in the, by the side of the group at your approach. She perks up and announces her voice ringing. Brave ones, the master of the ship has appealed before, appeared before you. The one who guides it through the darkness of the universe by the emperor's will. Greet your lord captain, the rogue traitor of the house of Von Valencius. Enrich Maltag. Montag. Interesting. You notice Infernus Master Enrich Montag standing a few paces away from the orphans. He watches you with approval and bows respectfully when you meet his gaze. Okay, here we go. Do you serve as a teacher to, in this in your spare time? I, the rogue trader, Lord Captain of this ship, speak to you now. Your parents gave their lives for just cause. Oh, excuse me. And brought honor to the Von Valencia's banners and those of the Imperium. I am proud of them, and I believe that you will become their worthy heirs. Your Lord Captain smiles at you. <laughs> Creepily. <laughs> no. Uh, address the chaperones. Give them treats and escort them to their homes. I believe a minute beholding the Lord Captain is great enough honor for them. Okay, calm down, dude. Uh, we're going to say, yo, uh, good job. Teenagers hang on air every word with bated breath. Only a few at the far end of the row seems sullen and not particularly impressed by your speech. Okay, cool. So what? Why were you... <laughs> Why should we care? Uh, okay, let me start over. One of the scouring visitors with a thin scar across his face tosses his head back and bitterly says, So what? Why should we care? Our friends and parents died in their dozens for you noble lot and you just give us speeches? Okay. Argenta quickly turns to the boy, a flurry of emotions flashing in her dark eyes, like she wants both to calm him and scold him for his impotence. Uh, their compartment leaves much to be desired. I hope they, they will be molded. Uh, audience is over, no. Punishable troublemaker, no thank you. You have things to say, say them without fear. I will listen or ignore him. Uh, say them without fear. I will listen. Smiles grimly. Doesn't matter what we say. It won't bring our parents back and it won't change the fate of our, f our fates either. We'll keep slaving away on this ship until we drop and die and are like our folks or worse. Holy shit, I have a response. <laughs> I understand your grief and dismay. Your parents died. It's not an easy thing to go through, but they gave their lives for the truth, for the good of the whole ship, for the Imperium. Do not speak of their honorable fate with anger or disdain. When the heretics who killed your parents attacked this ship, I was there. I took command, I fought, I repelled the assault as quickly as I could, but no war can be won without losses. I only strive to do what was within my power. Strong have the power to decide the fate of others. The weak either obey or die. <laughs> okay, these are all punish troublemaker or their compartment. Okay. We're gonna go with the first one. 
You heard the rogue trader. His words carry the wisdom of the Imperium. It's hard to say whether or not your words have left an impression on the boy, but he nods slowly. Then he catches himself and gives you an awkward bow. Abelard gives the signs and the servants immediately emerge carrying packaged treats with Von Valencia's emblazoned on the wrappers. It appears that the Seneschal came prepared for any contingency. Contingency. Give him candy. Yes, throw them candy. Oh, that's so good. What animation. Argento rubs her temples pensively. She stares... She smiles and offers a few more words of encouragement, then leaves the boy. Is that it? Oh, no. I have to wait for her to leave. Very slowly, she leaves. <laughs> okay. There we go. Here we are, back at the deck. Let's go back to Argenta. Holy shit! Wilbur can fucking book it, bro! God damn, he can run. How did I not notice how fucking fast he was? Greetings. Anyway. Tell me about the Adeptus Sororitas. Gladly. There are none more faithful to the God Emperor than my sisters. We fight against his enemies by the will of the Holy Ecclesiarchy. Ecclesiarchy? <laughs> I beg your pardon, rogue trader. Here I am talking about what every lesser noble in the Imperium knows. So what exactly are you interested in hearing about? They say they're the finest of oh, fiercest in their faith among the warriors in the Imperium. Is that true? It is. The Sisters of Battle are a fire lit by the God Emperor. They are the echo of his voice that travels through the dark expanses of the universe. We bring his wrath to heretics, mutants, and other enemies of humanity. We protect the faithful from the unholy and unhallowed. Sometimes with words, more often than not with a bolter. Cool. Are all your sisters truly as faultless as you say? Even the novices of the Adeptus Sororitas are drawn from among the most worthy. Those who have taken the vows and become a full-fledged sister are the best of the best, tested by trials of body and spirit. Yes, there have been cases when a sister stumbled or showed weakness, but do not expect to hear a story of depravity or downfall from me. Each such occurrence is a great tragedy for us all. Light cannot bear the smallest speck of darkness within. And thus, those who have trespassed or shown weakness of spirit are given a chance at redemption. They are called Sisters Repentia, and may the enemy tremble before her, for nothing can stop a sister of battle who yearns to be cleansed of faults and weakness. Wearing nothing but robes, no armor, eviscerator in hand, those sisters who have once faltered find repentance on the battlefield. Their lives are seldom long, but a death in the name of purgation is a better fate than to live with a shadow in one's soul. Interesting. What order are you from? Once I had completed my novitiate, I was sent to the Calixian branch of the Order of Our Martyred Lady, assigned to the Order's Pronatus. The Order's mission is vital and noble. The Sisters Pronatus protect great relics of the Imperium. We guard them, preserve them, escort them when they are brought onto the battlefield or presented for pilgrims to venerate. And we seek out the relics that have been lost. Neither a coven of heretics nor the most wicked death world can deter Sisters Pronatus when their goal is to return a piece of the great legacy of the Imperium into the hands of the faithful. Interesting lore, Imperium succeed the order pernatus is not one of orders militant and yet you're a trained fighter don't let the name deceive you the orders militant train sisters to march onto the battlefield as an army 
That does not make sisters who belong to the non-militant orders timid and helpless. Fair enough. Both the Solace Bringing Sisters Hospitaller and the Enlightened Sisters Dialogus know how to greet enemies of humanity. Their dialogue with heretics is usually quite short, with the last word being a Volta discharge. <laughs> and my order has all the more reason to be known for the martial prowess of its sisters. We are the keepers of the Imperium's relics. What would become of our blessed hero's legacy if the sisters Pronatus could not protect it? Interesting. You said to be... You said to belong to the Calaxian branch of your order. What brought you to the Coronis Expanse? The order sent me to Footfall. My undertaking was to assist the local priesthood of Drusians in caring for a sacred reliquary that had been there since the time of Parson Mr. Wayne, the station's founder. Are there any other members of the Adeptus Sororis in the Coronis Expanse? None that I'm aware of, but the Sisterhood's orders are many and can operate independently of one another, sending their sisters wherever their presence is needed as deemed by the Ecclesiarchy. Ecclesiarchy? Perhaps somewhere in the Lord Inquisitor's retinue- I need to say it multiple times the river. My sisters perform their duty as we speak. I wish it were so. Even a single evening spent in joint prayer and training would bring me joy. Ah, uh, that's too bad. I have no more questions about the sisterhood. Should any more arise, keeping them to yourself would be imprudent. It is a virtue to take an interest in holiness. Ah. Tell me about yourself. About me? I am the Emperor's daughter and his servant. What else is there to tell about me? You're not actually his daughter, though, right? <laughs> uh, how did you end up on Theodore's ship? I first came here when I found myself in need of passage from Footfall to a remote planet. But I imagine what interests you is not that first journey, but rather what brought me aboard prior to the pirate attack. That story is complicated. Oh, they fucked it up just there. So happened it's this cultist I... attack, not pirate. I made a mistake. In a moment of laxity, I was ambushed by the accursed followers of the arch enemy. I was badly wounded. Lady Theodora came to my aid and brought me aboard her ship, while her crew attended to me in my weakened state. It all happened not too long ago. I had barely recovered from my wounds when the pirates struck. Cultists. Truly, the servants of evil know no rest. There is no place where we can be safe from their machinations. True. Uh, what happened to the people who wounded you? Did Theodora's men eliminate them? Sadly, they did not. Lady Theodora was in a hurry. Sounds like a chose quest. Not to stay on the planet. <laughs> Her people took me to a ship while I was unconscious, and when I came to my senses, we were already flying away. Oh, how I pray to come face to face with those heretics once more, and it's bound to happen someday. Someday. You mentioned making a mistake. It happens even to the best of us. My mistakes are my burden to bear. I'll find a way to atone for them. Where did this happen? On one of the recently discovered planets in the Expanse. No one suspected that it had already been tainted by the filth of heresy. Had I known it beforehand, of course I would have been on my guard. We could go to the planet and deal with the Chaos Worshippers. The path to that planet was lost. All the knowledge is gone along with the previous navigator. It would take immense effort and resources to rediscover the route. The heir to the Von Valancy's protectorate must have plenty of other issues to deal with right now. Perhaps later, when the skies above our heads have cleared. What was it like traveling on Theodora's ship? I hadn't been here that long. Just one journey from Footfall and the other journey, the majority of which I spent in the confines of the Med Bay. I can't tell you much about the first voyage. I was more focused on prayers and ruminations than on the people around me or the journey itself. During the last journey, Seneschal Viserion stood out for me. He came by several times to ask about my health. 
He is an honorable man and a loyal servant of the Imperium. I think he is as meticulous in his inspections of the logistic systems as he is in his inquiries about the health of the occasional sister of battle aboard the ship. But not all of Theodora's people have earned my trust. <laughs> you know who I'm talking about. There is no place for Adira Tlas among the God Emperor's faithful. I'm surprised she wasn't in league with the pirates. And I'm equally Altus. surprised by how deep <laughs> heresy and treason run in this place. I'm glad we all made it through that dark hour. May the day that follows be bright. I have no more questions. Thank you. As you wish. Oh, actually, I have one more question. Thank you. <laughs> what is it that's keeping you in my retinue? This ship was targeted by heretical pirates, which means that my presence here and the assistance I provide to you are my sacred duty. Sooner or later, I will likely have to return to Footfall to protect its reliquary. But for now, I wish to remain a part of the Rogue Trader's crew. It's a pleasure to have... It pleases me to have a servant of the Golden Throne in my crew. May the enemies of the Imperium tremble before our onslaught. I enjoy your company, Argenta. I hope that you remain in the crew and that that ship becomes your home. You might be of use to me. <laughs> uh, I have no. Pl I see no place for you on my ship. No, thank you. Uh, welcome home. Those are very courteous words, Rogue Trader. Thank you, both for your words and your hospitality. Thank you for the conversation. Until next time. Okay. Well. I think uh, Cassia is the only one we haven't talked to. There, I need to find where Adira is. I don't know where Adira is, but she also had a thing to tell me, like a personal request. But I will leave it off there for now. Uh, very cool, very fun. I'm glad to be back, honestly, even with all the big hard words. <laughs> And my small, smooth brain. <laughs> yeah, I'm enjoying it. I'll see you in the next one.